Manchester City have dropped points again without Rodri. A fantastic game for a neutral Manchester City draw at Newcastle. We're going to break it down. We've got so much football today. Arsenal, Leicester, Liverpool away to Wolves and tomorrow is the big one. Man United versus Tottenham. Let me know your thoughts down below. Can City win the Premier League without Rodri? The first game after his, uh, I was about to say sending off, his injury, they drop points. Let me know your thoughts. Make sure you drop a like if you haven't already. The road to 25k subscribers is well and truly on. We are steamrolling our way there. Less than 300 subscribers away. So big up to every single one of you. But Newcastle won, Manchester City won. And you know what? When I saw the lineup from Guardiola, I thought, Man City, if there's more than enough out there. There's more than enough. There's Haaland, there's Gundogan, there's Bernardo, you know, there's Grealish, there's, Gund there's Kovacic, Rico Lewis playing in a double pivot. It's an interesting lineup from City. Obviously, no Rodri. It's massive for them. Um, I thought he would go Bernardo and maybe Kovacic and then play Savinho out on the right-hand side. Um, then you look at their bench they played. Uh, Jeremy Doku, Savinho, Foden. Foden still has not started a Premier League game. Now, is that concerning? Let me know your thoughts down below. If, if I was Phil Foden... I don't know if it's an injury. I don't know if it's a hangover from the Euros. I don't know if it's lack of fitness. But for whatever reason, he has got to start now. Um, the following game, obviously, they've got Europe coming up. They've got Premier League, League Cup away to Spurs. The fixtures are coming up, you know, relentlessly. And no De Bruyne again today. So they're missing three. Well, from the first 11, they're missing three of their biggest players. But there's still enough out there. They've still got Grealish. I think this season he's really got a point to prove. Gundogan, we know his quality, Bernardo and Haaland. And I believe it's the first game this season where Erling Haaland has not been on the score sheet. And you look at Newcastle's lineup, I didn't expect anything else. The back four practically picks itself. No Livermento, Trippier in there. Tonali, Bruno Gomares and Jolinton, one of the most physical midfields in the Premier League. And I, I said this on, on the top six show on the Football Terrace. I said this on TikTok. Man City will not beat Newcastle. There is so much physicality in this team. There's so much pace on the counter-attack with Gordon Barnes, Murphy. No Alexander Isak in the 11. Their bench, Livermento, Willock. No, do you know what? No Alexander Isak. Full stop. Um, Really, really interesting start to the game. The game was, you know, physical, fast-paced. What you'd expect from two very, very good sides. Um. I don't I'm gonna be honest, I don't think Pep got it right. This game, I think you need width to beat Newcastle. Uh Man City have got lots of late runners into the box. When Tottenham played them, we used the width, but we just didn't have enough chances, clear cut chances to take. Um match stats very, very, very even in terms of shots, in terms of shots on goal. 16 to 11, you know, six to four uh corners, you know, six to five. You know, passes, obviously, Man City are always going to dominate that. Um, and obviously, City go 1-0 up. Jack Grealish beats Trippier. Vardy Al makes a late run into the box. And before you know it, Manchester City are 1-0 up in around the 35th minute. And at that point, I thought, get into halftime for City. And it's all about the, the game management. I was surprised that Guardiola picked uh, Kyle Walker. Of course, he played minutes against. He played another 90 today. He played minutes against Watford. I think he played the full 90 against Arsenal. You know, the, the fixtures are relentless. And Rodri, funny enough, before his injury, said about going on strike due to the volume of games. And now, you know, Manchester City are one nil up at half time. I thought Newcastle set up perfectly for the counter-attack. Um, and the second half, you know, some substitutions were made early on, you know, but around... 55, 56 minutes, um, you know, penalty to Newcastle. Um, Grimari slips through to Gordon, who races away from Akanji behind the defence around Edison after being taken down. And then Gordon steps up, takes the penalty, and it's a lovely penalty. And then, then the last 30 minutes, when the pressure's on City, I was like, right, Liverpool play today and Arsenal play today. The Premier League is very close. You know, it's a very close. I know we're only six games in, but Man City have suffered a tremendous setback without Rodri. Liverpool, if they win today, they go top of the league. If Arsenal win today, they go level on points with City. So 
of it. Villa win today. They got above them. I know it's only six games in, whatever. It's still massive, though. And the last 30 minutes, I around when they scored the goal, I thought, right, bring on Savinho, bring on Doku, use your actual wide players and maybe put Grealish into a more central role. Maybe take off Bernardo or Gundogan um, into a deeper role and let Grealish have license to play on the ball. Um, he took off Doku for Grealish on the round, the 80th minute. He took off Savinho for Rico Lewis. I was happy to see Rico Lewis have a start, um, not just because I've got him in my FBL team, but, you know, Kyle Walker's been scrutinised a lot recently. I don't know whether Rico Lewis is the answer to play alongside Gundogan or alongside Kovacic to kind of replace that that miss from uh, from outside from Rodri. And I don't think Rico Lewis had that bad of a game today. Um, but they... You know, they, they pressed, they pressed, they pressed. Foden had a couple of chances in the second half, but it wasn't good enough for Man City today. I don't remember them creating too many clear-cut chances for Erlen Haaland. You look at the Premier League table, City are, of course, top, but they've played six games. Liverpool, Arsenal, Villa um, have all played five. And to my knowledge, Newcastle are still unbeaten at St. James's Park this season. You know, yes, they scored a goal today, but... Uh, Man City, Haaland, you know, th there's that narrative of if you stop Haaland, you stop City. Well, today, um, Newcastle stopped Erling Haaland. They got a draw. I do expect Arsenal to go out there today and put three or four goals past Leicester. And I do expect Liverpool to get a win comfortably away to Wolves, which would mean, Man and I expect Villa to win as well, which would mean Manchester City would drop to around third or maybe even fourth if Arsenal get a lot of goals at the Emirates. And when you look at Manchester City's games they've got coming up, look, they've got the best squad in the world. No questions asked. However, I don't think people realise how big of a miss this Rodri is. Wolves away. They've got a bad record there. I think the Wolves are one of their bogey teams. Southampton they and Fulham, I expect City to smoke them. As well as Sparta Pra and as well as Slavian Bratislava. However, look after the Tottenham game in the Cup. They play Brighton. They play Tottenham again. They play Bournemouth away, which is a tough game, and Liverpool away. So, Feyenoord and Sporting, I expect them to go out and smoke them. But are people sleeping on how big of a miss, you know, are they sleeping on how big of a miss Rodri is to this Manchester City side? I don't think people realise. He's absolutely everything. He sets the tempo of the game. He's the glue. He, he's the transition between defence and attack. He's absolutely world-class, and there is no ifs, buts, or maybes around it. But Manchester City have dropped points again without Rodri. And if you look at their record with and without, it is night and day. And I think that is what you will see all over the media this week, is their record with or without him. Let me know your thoughts down below. Do Manchester City have enough in the tank to go and win a fifth Premier League title on the bounce? As of right now, I don't... I well, if they're going to do it, I think this is Guardiola's greatest Premier League title. Last year, they did it without Rodri. Uh, sorry, they did it without Kevin De Bruyne and Phil Foden stepped up. And he was absolutely unbelievable, unplayable in certain games. Last game of the season, they're at home to West Ham. Who's going to set the tempo? There you go, Foden, Brace, no worries. Whereas Rodri being out, for me, it's an. I think Rodri's a bigger miss to this side than Kevin De Bruyne because you've got Grealish, you've got Savinho, you've got Doku. You've got Foden, you've got players, Bernardo Silva, Gundogan, who can still create chances for Har Haaland and Co. However, who steps in in that number six role? Is Rico Lewis going to be the guy this season? Is it going to be Kovacic? Is it going to be Nunes? There's, there's a huge amount of answers that are, sorry, a huge amount of questions that are going to be thrown Guardiola's way this, this, um, this week from the media. You know, and the games are coming thick and fast. I, at this present time, don't think Manchester City are going to win the league. They've drawn their last two games. You know, they, of course, they've got the best manager in the world. They've got the best number nine in the world. They've got the best squad in the world. But without him, I I, I don't know. I'm I'm very much on the fence of if Guardiola brings in someone in January, maybe a Zuba Mendy, there's links to him around from Sociedad. That'd be a proper gut punch to Liverpool as well if he joined them. But maybe if you bring in a Zuba Mendy, maybe. But Arsenal and Liverpool have got two hell of a squads. They've got great managers. They're firing all cylinders. They're both really strong defensively. 
I'm not so sure Man City are going to do it this year. But let me know your thoughts. Make sure you drop a like. Make sure you have subscribed. And I'll see you on the next one. Thank you for watching. I am.